this beast of a solar generator whoo is absolutely the best bang for the buck for a system of this size which is a heavy cap unit that i have found period and it having this expansion battery is one of the reasons why it's such a powerful contender for the solar generators on the market this solar power station has enough capacity to run the essentials of a house for two days straight i've already tested that and it's more affordable for a similar size systems like the Titan, Delta Pro, AC300, and even the Apollo. But is it gonna work for emergency backup power, for off-grid living, RVing? Is this something that I want to trust my life and my family's life with if the grid is out? We actually just went through a major blackout and these got to be put to the test. So we're gonna find out if it's absolutely worth it. And then in the end, I'm actually gonna show you a special trick to make this have split phase 240 volt power without needing a second unit. That means you can supply power to the whole house. I'm gonna go over all the specs, the pros, the cons, what doesn't work well, and what does work well, all right here. Now to be clear, Opez, I believe that's how you say it. Some people call it Oops or Opes. Anyway, Ope sent this out to me for an honest review. They've given me zero direction on anything to say. I don't do that kind of stuff. I just do full honest reviews. You guys get to see what works and what doesn't work. And the first thing that I want to determine is how good the inverter is, because what a lot of people don't understand is that if the inverter isn't a high quality inverter, that you're not going to get as much out of the battery. Now this has a 4,000 watt pure sine wave 120 volt inverter, and then a 5,040 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now the cool thing of that is it means that the battery is bigger than the inverter, which means you can't discharge it so hard that it's going to cause the life cycles of the battery to suffer. So in order to find out how good the inverter is, I put a heavy load on this of about 1400 watts constant, which is for backup power, definitely high, but that's about a 0.14 C rate for this setup with the expansion battery. Normally I do this test at about a 0.2 C rate, but the problem is because this has a 10,080 watt hour battery with the expansion battery attached, I can't do 0.2 C because that would be over 2000 watts and my watt meter is rated to 1800 watts at the very most, and I don't wanna max it out like that. So I run this all the way from 100% down to 0%, so that way I can see how much of the battery capacity is coming out of the inverter. Now tests like this can be run over and over again, or you could run it like this over and over again, because the battery is rated to 3500 cycles. And once you reach 3500 cycles, it'll be 80% efficient, meaning you'll have 80% of the battery usable versus when it was brand new where you have 100% of the battery usable. Now the Mega 5 comes in at a very affordable $32.99 for the main unit. The Mega 5 is about the same price as the Delta Pro because this is basically trying to copy the same size and form factor as the Delta Pro. The dimensions are almost the exact same. However, even though it's near the same price at retail, this has a 40% larger battery. That's still lithium iron phosphate, still rated to 3,500 cycles down to 80% efficiency. And what that means is once the internal battery has been used 3,500 times, that it's going to be 80% as good as it was when it was brand new. And so with the Mega 5 and one expansion battery, you get 10,080 watt hours of capacity versus the Delta Pro, you need one Delta Pro and two expansion batteries to get 10,800 watt hours, but then you're having to move three different components versus just two. If you were to compare that to say the AC300 from Bluetti, you would have one Bluetti AC300 main unit, and then you'd have to have three expansion batteries, and that's still not gonna be the full 10,000 watt hour comparison. That's gonna be closer to about 9,200 watt hours. But at retail, a Delta Pro with two expansion batteries is about $9,100. And right now there's a bunch of sales going on that bring that down to about 6,100. But the Mega 5 with the expansion battery at retail is normally 5,500, which is already cheaper than the Delta Pro at sale price. And right now as making this video, you can actually get the Mega 5 and an expansion battery for about $4,900, which is an insane deal. And I'm gonna go over the pricing in an apples to apples comparison here in just a second. I'll show you my huge comparison chart, which shows all of these systems compared head to head. But the bottom line is an expanded Delta Pro system 
is about $1,200 more when it's on sale versus an expanded Mega 5 system when it's on sale. For the AC300, it's even more than the Delta Pro. So the Mega 5 fully expanded is even better priced than it's say an AC300 setup. But it's not just about the price. The Mega 5 has up to 2,100 watts of solar input. So we've got a 4,000 watt inverter, 10 kilowatt hour battery, and 2.1 kilowatts of solar input. For emergency backup power, if you only need to run things like a fridge, freezer, lights, Wi-Fi, fans, those kinds of things, it works great. There was one major thing that Ops messed up on with the Mega 5, and then there's a couple of other small things that I do dislike. We've got great connectors here, and the expansion battery port is right here on the expansion battery, but this blank bay right here on the Mega 2, which is the smallest version in the Mega series, has its own solar input port on the battery, which means for the Mega 2, you can have 2100 watts going into the main unit, and then for every B2 expansion battery, another 2100 watts. You can't do that with the Mega 5's expansion battery, which they call the B5, and that just leaves me wondering why Ops would do that. Why would they add 2100 watts to such a small battery, but not to the bigger battery? Now the good news is, is that this does have just enough solar input that you can recharge this whole system in a single day. But that was definitely a huge letdown for me because I thought the B5 would have that extra solar input because the B2 battery has that. Here in Idaho, we just had a massive winter storm. It actually crossed multiple states, including Nevada, Oregon, California. And here we had power outages for two or three days for some people. We had power lines out, tens of thousands of people were affected, literally broken over in the snow, taken down because of how heavy and hard the snow was hitting. One of my friends has a dual fuel generator just for emergency backup power, and he couldn't get it started. So he and his family could not have backup power when they needed it the most. So I offered my friend to come over and borrow a solar generator since I have a few, and I recommended the Mega 5 to him because of what his setup was. He needed to run a fridge, two freezers, Wi-Fi chargers, other basic things just to have communications, keep their food cold, and that's exactly what he did. At the end of the two days, after adding the B5 expansion battery, he still had energy left over, and he had no issues running all of his equipment that he needed for that time. And to be clear, they did not set up any solar panels. They didn't recharge off of the propane generator. They didn't get that going or anything. It was purely the battery capacity. Now let's see how the Mega 5 stacks up against all these other units on my comparison chart. By the way, you can find this for free in the links underneath this video. And it's an apples to apples comparison, including the price for all the different pieces. And there's even a guide up here to show you how to use it all. So in the top left, you can actually see that there is a guide to the colors on what the different cell colors mean. Then here at the top, you can see what the minimum requirements are to be in the heavy cap category, which is down here. I've got different categories for different purposes. And the Mega 5 fits in the heavy cap category perfectly. You can see all the specs about the inverter, as well as the battery, charging, just general information, and then the pricing. And the pricing is what I wanna really get into in just a second. And then I'll show you exactly how I solar charge and then get 240 volt split phase power out of this system. But generally speaking, compared to all these other systems that are on the market, the Mega 5 does extremely well. Being in fourth place, has a three year warranty. The customer service has, so far has been good for me. It's not the heaviest system out there, but it's definitely heavy. And it does have a Wi-Fi app that works really well. Sometimes you'll need to get a link from Opez in order to download it. And it holds a charge for up to a year. Right now, it's on sale for $28.79. So getting to the price, if you look here, it's not fair to compare just battery or just inverter size. So I take the three most important factors, which is the inverter battery and solar rechargeability, and I factor those prices individually and then put it together in what I call a whole watt of the system. And of all of the systems here, it pretty much has the cheapest or one of the cheapest setups. The only other one that's cheaper is another Opez product. And so if you're looking for the most affordable, this is the way to go. There are still some limitations like the weight and the solar input. It's hard to get the full 2100 watts, but it's really hard to go wrong with this as long as you know what it can and cannot do. So I'll have links for this system as well as discounts and everything like that down below. 
but you can see here it's $28.79 right now and you can also get the expansion battery for $19.99 and they also have some options where you can get expandable folding solar panels and the like. But you can see here it's normally $2,300 for the battery and about $3,200 for the main unit. Now even during a massive snowstorm you can get decent solar input from your solar panels. So let's go see how it works on a clear sunny day like today to see how fast it's going to recharge the Mega 5. So here I have my solar wires. I have four 400 watt panels coming in and I got my probes in here on my voltmeter and we're getting 144 volts. But here we can see the amps going up as well as the wattage going up because watts is just volts times amps. So we've actually exceeded 1600 watts now and that's because it's cold outside. I'm getting the full solar input, which is incredible, but we can see we're almost at 15 amps, which means there isn't much more room to put in more solar. We'd have to increase the volt somehow, and that I don't know how to do because we can't exceed 150, and we're already really close to that. Now you can see about half of the amount of power is going to the expansion battery, saying here it's on the output. So here we see that number still showing up here on the input of the B5 expansion battery. Now, if you want me to make a dedicated video about this, then comment down below that you want to see it. This is an auto transformer from Victron Energy. And basically what it allows me to do is take 120 volts up to 30 amps right here through this plug, put it into this device, spin it up to 240 volt split phase where I have this outlet that I can then run anything 240 volts. Now it's still gonna be limited to whatever the inverter I've attached to this is, but this has a 4,000 watt inverter, which means it has a true 30 amp RV plug. So I take my actual RV plug that I take with me when I'm RVing, I plug it into the front of this, connect it to here, spit it out and get 240 volts. Let me show you. Go right into here, this into there. I'm gonna keep this in the off position. There's no power. I'm gonna turn on AC output. We see that turns on here. We're gonna get a light that turns on right here in this. There that goes, you can see that orange light. Now I'm gonna turn this on. We see we got power here. I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna to go to volts AC, and this is gonna be a little tricky to do one-handed. I'm gonna stick these in right here, and I've already tested this, but just gonna show you guys. I'm getting 233 volts right there at 60 Hertz. So what I do is I do this setup and I plug in my crypto miner, and then this pays me twice a day in cryptocurrency that I can then sell for US dollars, which then helps me buy preparedness items. There's a lot that goes into getting this set up properly, but if you want a video dedicated to how to set this auto transformer up, then comment down below. And if you want to see a dedicated video on how I mine crypto off of my extra solar that I produce here, that way I get paid back much faster, then comment that down in the comments as well. By the way, because this runs so hot, I heat my entire garage very easily. So I love the Mega 5 because it has a great inverter, decent battery expandability, and I can get 240 if I use this hack. Otherwise, you can only have one of these units and you cannot get 240 volt power. So for basic power needs like fridge, freezer, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, TV, chargers, those kinds of things, this is an awesome unit and it's my top recommended one for 120 volt only for those essential powers only. If you need more than that, then you're gonna need a bigger and better system. You can go to poweredportablesolar.com and see which systems I recommend. But if you wanna see my video on my favorite ultimate portable system, then that's gonna be the Mega 2 right up here. You wanna click that and watch that video to see why I recommend it so much. Thanks guys, be prepared. See you on the next video.